Hello, I'm Bobby in Blue, and on this channel we talk about how to get the most out of your tech. Since the Vision Pro came out, I've been using it and working inside of it and just really trying to figure out what Vision Pro is and what spatial computing can do for me. And so all of that has been kind of leading up to this latest release from Apple. This is the Apple Vision Pro N5 edition. Um, some very, very minor differences. The first being the band. A lot of people talked about the, how they loved this solo band from the first one, and they added a top strap now so that it's kind of both. The genius thing about this is the the tightening and loosening mechanism it reminds me of a snowboard boot honestly you can pull it out like this and that will tighten the top strap and you can push it in and that will tighten the back strap and so they made the strap a lot better not just in aesthetic and function but also in taking weight off of your face and taking weight off of your head so it's more comfortable to wear for longer periods of time cosmetically the apple vision pro update the 2025 or m5 edition um it's cosmetically the same there's literally no difference between it when it comes to the overall look and feel of it. It is a little bit heavier due to this addition of the band, not only the top band being included now, but this band in the back actually has metal in the back of it to kind of help balance out the weight, bring some of the weight to the back of your head. A lot of people have been talking about how one of the biggest problems with the Vision Pro was its weight, so why would Apple go and make it heavier? Well, let's actually discuss that and call it what it really is. The weight difference is very, very minor. I mean, we're talking grams, and really the reason for it is, is because they're trying to offset the weight and to make it better to be on your head for longer periods of time and I think they've done that whether it's the addition of this top strap the weight in the back or just kind of rethinking how this strap works I've been able to wear my vision pro for a lot longer sessions and have a lot more comfort with it on my head and those who have come out and said oh it's heavier Apple's moving in the wrong direction they're definitely not using the headset or even trying to understand it they're definitely just trying to get clicks one of the things that's been on my mind the entire time I've had the Apple vision pro with the first version and now with this m5 version is what do you do with it it's kind of odd because you put it on your head you're able to do things but there's kind of this moment where you've seen it all and done it all and yeah it's really cool and it executes it really well but it doesn't necessarily have like this killer feature or this killer use case that you want to use over and over again and there's also something kind of isolating about using the vision pro there's something to be said about ar and vr no matter what the headset is when it comes to isolation but for me it's all about using the tool when i should be using the tool one of the main things that i use my vision pro for is using it to mirror my apple desktop and it's interesting that people have described that isolation as a negative thing because for me it's almost like having headphones for my eyes having the headset on allows me to focus on the work that's in front of me and get the work done that i need to not only that but it gives me great big real estate you know the full digital screen to be able to see the entire thing that's going on with my Mac it gives me room to open up After Effects and Premiere at the same time and use dynamic linking between the two of them or be editing a video and have my notes or my script or something next to it and having that digital workspace where I can connect my Mac to the Vision Pro has got to be the standout killer feature for me and when it comes to working in the Vision Pro it's something that I've been able to do for anywhere from two to six hours I've even had eight hour days where I've been in the Vision Pro for the majority of the day and I will say between the first generation Apple Vision Pro and now this updated M5 Vision Pro, there's something different. Whether it's rendering more pixels because it does render about 10% more pixels or the new refresh rate, you know, I think it was around 90, you know, before and now they brought it up to 120. I don't know what it is, but there's something going on that makes it so my eyes don't get fatigued a lot sooner than they used to with the first generation. I wouldn't say it's this massive difference between the two and some of it could be because my eyes have just gotten really used to working in the headset. So I'm not going to say it's some big feature out there that's changing everything, and I can't quite put my finger on what it is. But that being said, whether it's the comfort of the new strap, the adjusted weight of having some of the weight in the back to balance it out, or this upgrade in pixel output or refresh rate, all of it kind of comes together as small little things being brought together to make the experience better. And I found myself being able to work inside the Vision Pro for a lot longer and kind of forgetting that I'm inside of the Vision Pro and just kind of getting work done. So this week between Adobe Max sessions, I've been getting my work done inside the Vision Pro. I'll sit here on my hotel room bed, or I've even been standing over here on the hotel room counter to be able to get some work done. It's kind of like having a standing desk away from home. And then of course, Apple Vision OS 26. I love all the new updated features that they've given to us, and it feels like spatial computing is starting to grow up and mature. The other interesting thing with the Apple Vision Pro M5 is that almost the same timeline, Samsung just released the new Galaxy XR headset as well. And so many people are trying it out 
and calling it like the cheaper, lighter version of the Apple Vision Pro, but it has all the same stuff and it has a YouTube app, so it must be perfect and all this other stuff. And though I really love that Samsung's headset has come out and it's kind of competing with the Apple Vision Pro, which I think is awesome when the company competes, we get better stuff. But it's interesting to me how, how quickly people were upset at Apple because they wanted better quality and cutting edge stuff. And then as soon as Apple brought out something that was quality and cutting edge, they're pissed because it costs too much. It just seems like a lot of people whining in both directions of the fence. And so I do think the Samsung Galaxy XR is awesome. I got a chance to try it on and play with it. It does a lot of the same similar things that the Vision Pro does. It does have a YouTube app and it does have, you know, native Netflix and things like that. But I see that as an extension of Android and I see the Apple Vision Pro as an extension of, you know, iOS or Apple ecosystem. And so it's great to have a headset that kind of works in both areas. But to call it some competitor to one or the other or, you know, it's a headset that's half the price that gets the same result or whatever. I don't think it's necessarily the same result, though the headset is cheaper and it is lighter and things like that. There's also some very interesting compromises that they made as well. The other idea that's out there right now with the Apple Vision Pro or the Samsung Galaxy XR is the glasses side of things. We've seen Meta come out with the new Meta Ray-Ban displays recently, and we kind of see the headsets over on one side and the glasses over on one side, and they're kind of making their way towards each other, trying to really figure things out. The immersive experience that you get with goggles and being like completely isolated with the light still around your face. And so you can be in kind of this, you know, AR or VR experience is very different than having glasses on your face where the light leaks underneath. And though I think there's a space for both of them, I think we're kind of going to meet in the middle where there's this interesting dynamic between the two of them. Headsets are going to get smaller and lighter weight and more powerful. Glasses are going to get, you know, smaller and lighter weight and more powerful. And at some point, I think we're going to start to see Apple Vision OS being brought to glasses. Many say that Apple has a pair of glasses in the works and I honestly truly believe that that's where we're moving in a lot of ways. Something I keep thinking about with the glasses is the Meta Ray Band displays are all inclusive into the glasses and they kind of connect to this neural band and they kind of broke it up a little bit and then it connects to your phone to give you other functionality and things like that. The one thing that I think is missing from the Meta camp or Meta's idea overall is in the earlier versions of the Meta Ray Band displays or maybe in a more advanced version that they haven't brought out, they have like a little puck that goes into your pocket that's like a processing puck where all the major computing happens and then the glasses are more like a display and then the neural band allows you to connect so that it actually can you know it's a user interface the one thing that's interesting to me is all of this tech whether it's headsets or whether it's glasses or whatever it is one of the best things that it can do to help people use it more or to make it more viable to people who may not be early adopters is to connect it to what we currently have in our pockets you know make it work with our computers make it work with our phones make it work with our tablets those kind of things and help that be a bridge that kind of bridges the gap from one place to the other so people can understand what these headsets are and what they can do and the one thing that i see is troublesome for meta though i really think their glasses are cool i got a chance to try them out the other week and they were awesome is I believe that Samsung or Google I guess and Apple already have a phone that's in our pockets so when it comes to getting glasses to work all that central computing or whatever can happen on our phones and then be displayed on our glasses and so that is something that's missing piece for me when I look at meta is they don't really have a phone that's successful that's out there and they don't necessarily have control over Google operating system to be able to kind of you know end to end make the experience really good from one side or the other so though I'm excited about the meta ray-ban display glasses and I can't tell you how many times that I've been like, okay, I'm going to buy them. I just want to play with them. It's so cool. Even at my demo, I decided to buy some. And then at, right after I was like, no, they, they're not capable. They can't do anything. But anyway, my point is, is that I think that's a hurdle that Meta is going to have to try and get over is that right now, I think Google or Samsung and Apple are better poised to bring out some glasses that connects to the devices that we already know and have. And it will help bridge our gap into this AR glasses or, you know, AR VR headset world that we're headed towards. And I don't see that with Meta. They're going to have to continue to try and rely rely on Apple's phones and kind of connecting it to the software, rely on Google's phones and connecting it to the software. And though the displays are really cool and the glasses are really neat, I think that's going to be a stumbling block for them where these other manufacturers are going to have an easier chance getting you to love their glasses because you're already inside of their ecosystem and it connects and works with tech that you have today that kind of helps you bridge the gap to what this vision of the future with AR glasses can be. So when the new Apple Vision Pro M5 was announced, I was kind of teetering back and forth of what I should do. Do I just keep my current vision? 
Vision Pro? Do I chase something like the Meta Ray-Ban display glasses? And for me, it came down to usability and what I would actually use it for today. Though the Meta Ray-Ban displays are awesome and there's a lot of tech going on there to make it work really well and it's very neat in a lot of ways, I got done with my demo trying them on and I was like, but what am I gonna do with this? And even though it's cool and check it out, it's, it's not necessarily usable for me today. So when it came to selling my first generation Apple Vision Pro and upgrading to this Apple Vision Pro M5, I knew immediately what I could do with it today. And that's one of the other things that has really changed for me when it comes to looking at these headsets. I work inside the Apple Vision Pro on a regular basis, on a daily basis. I love being able to take it with me to travel and have a bigger expanded display so that I can get editing done on the go. I love being able to watch movies in it. I love being able to connect with other people in the personas calls. And it's such a cool experience. I think personas have come a long ways from the first generation of personas. And to know that it's all being, you know, live rendered on your headset, I think is really cool. So though the Apple Vision Pro is heavy and though the Apple Vision Pro is expensive and there's a lot of other options out there, for me, the Apple Vision Pro still makes the most sense. Not only does it connect to the ecosystem that I use with my Mac and my phone and my iPad, but it also just allows allows me to get my work done right now. I'm not counting on future updates from Meta. I'm not counting on future updates that may or may not come. I'm using it right now with the things that I do right now, not only in my job, but in my play and in my fun. It's just a great, awesome headset. The other day we were carving pumpkins and I put the new Vision Pro on and I opened up the DaVinci Eyes app and I was able to find a pumpkin that I wanted to cut out and put it into the DaVinci Eyes app. And then it lets you like spatially place the image and then lock it there. And so I was able to kind of digitally project onto my pumpkin and then trace around my pumpkin and so that I had a place where I could carve out. And that's just something nerdy. That's something that, you know, most people will roll their eyes at or whatever. But that is absolutely the pinnacle of what spatial computing or what these headsets can do is like finding a cool way to be able to use it in a better way to do something that gave me a real world object, the ability to interact with some of the digital parts of it and to mesh those things together. And it let me draw a face on my pumpkin or draw on my pumpkin and then cut it out. And I love that it's bringing a little bit of my digital, you know, design or layout or editing side of me into the physical space and being able to do something I normally couldn't. So when it comes to the future of spatial computing and the Apple Vision Pro or the Samsung XR or, you know, Meta's Ray-Ban glasses or whatever the kind of next iteration is, We'll have goggles or headsets over here. We'll have glasses over here. And they're going to kind of keep moving towards the center until we figure out exactly what these are and what it can be. And for me, a lot of it comes down to the software and finding those, you know, current moments that we can use it right now and current uses that really make sense for our headsets to, you know, work on them or other things that we can use them right now. And then to really open the door for what the future can hold. So whether you're in the Meta Display camp, whether you're in the Samsung Galaxy XR camp, or like me in the Apple Vision Pro camp, spatial computing is such a cool thing. Every time I try it out and I see a great useful case for it, I can just envision what the future looks like. You know, we have glasses on our faces. Our phones in our pocket are the central processing unit that does all the computing. We have some way to, you know, control everything with our hands and with our gestures, whether that's a band or whether that's cameras. I'm not sure what it looks like. But what I do know is, is that whatever spatial computing ends up being and however it evolves, I'm here for it and I absolutely love it. It's so interesting to be alive right now and to look at technology because so much of the technology that we have right now is almost out of sci-fi movies that when we were younger, we looked at and said, oh yeah, that's not real. And we're actually living it right now. What do you think of spatial computing and kind of where are you in the mix of this? More Apple Vision Pro, more Quest 3, Samsung XR, jumping straight to the glasses with the Meta Ray-Ban displays. Let me know in the comments below what you think. One thing's for sure, I love new technology and that's something I've loved about being here out here in Los Angeles for Adobe Max is checking out how the new technologies are working with inside the Adobe camp and seeing really what's next. It's a lot to unpack and a lot to think about. There's a lot of changes that are kind of coming forth with everything in this next generation. Um, I've got a couple of sessions I'm gonna go to at Adobe Max and I've got some work to do. So I'm gonna throw my headset on and get that work done. Thanks for watching, I'm Bobby in Blue. On this channel we talk about how to get the most out of your tech and we'll see you in the next one.